tonight on Access TV. It's Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh with Eddie Pence, Liz Mealy, Kevin Iso, Jason Anders. This week's host, Adam Ferrara. Gotham Comedy Live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Ferrara! Thank you so much, folks. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome to the world-famous Gotham Comedy Club right here in New York City. This is Gotham Comedy Live. How you guys doing? Oh, that's my town. It is so nice to be home. I was, I've been traveling. I was, in, uh, I was in Jamaica, the island, not Queens. Look at you guys. He took the train. What a world traveler he is. Woodside. Next up, the big city. This way. We actually flew Air Jamaica. That's like a Bob Marley tour bus in the sky. The captain gets on Air Jamaica like, this is your captain's speaking. <laughs> Don't look at me, man. Don't look at me. I can't do it now. I'll call you back. <laughs> this is your captain again. I apologize for that drop in altitude. I saw a cloud and thought it was a chicken salad sandwich. It was nice. I'm not a big drug guy. I'm really... I took acid once. Yeah. Then I assessed the damage to my car and thought, this isn't a good idea. <laughs> I took acid. I was driving in Ohio and I swerved to avoid the pyramids. <laughs> You have to do something when the mummies are chasing you. Oh, they're slow, but they're persistent. <laughs> they're still here and the steering wheel's melting. <laughs> I, was, I was off in ecstasy the other day. Yeah, at my age. I can't even have dairy. Are you kidding me? That's what I need is six hours with glow sticks. Like, na, 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 na. I, I can't even take medication. I, I have ADD. I don't know if you noticed. And I had it before it was cool. You know, now if you're a kid and you have ADD, they give you speed, isn't that nice? You, did, they, you get amphetamine, like, I can't focus. <laughs> I'm up! <laughs> Let's read! <laughs> One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, done! <laughs> I do nothing anymore, I can't, everything's gotta be healthy. My wife, well, my wife is, she's a big health nut, so everything in our house is organic, a lot of organic foods. It's healthy, but you know, at least it's expensive and it tastes shitty, so that's good. <laughs> We spend a lot of money on food. I don't want to tell you the name of the supermarket we shop at, but it rhymes with Whole Foods. <laughs> have you been there? Have you been to that house of gluten-free bandits? It's a gluten, you can't have gluten, you can't, nobody, you can't, nobody really knows what it is, but it'll kill you. It's like this mysterious, deadly, it's like the chupacabra. <laughs> nobody can tell you, but you gotta stay away from it. So I can't, I can't have gluten, I can't have, uh, I can't have anything, no refined sugar, I can't have any white flour, I can't, no more peanut butter. No, my wife says no more peanut butter. Well, there's a lot of reasons. Main reason I can't have peanut butter is I stopped arguing with her. <laughs> oh, I put up a fight for a while. I was like, why, baby? Because there's mold in the shells. Baby, I don't eat the shells. <laughs> so we tried the natural, you ever try natural peanut butter? That's nice, you open it up and there's a BP oil slick on top. <laughs> that's really not their fault, so what am I making a big deal out of it for? You have to stir it. Oh, I'm sorry, do I work for these fucking people? Is it? It's just charge me a lot of money. No, no, that's all right. I'm here. I'll finish your job. That's Let me tell you something. Skippy was always ready. <laughs> Skippy was there. Skippy was my pal. Skippy knew me better than I knew myself. I'd sneak in the window late at night, try not to wake anybody up. I hear Skippy in the cupboard like, you're drunk again. <laughs> yeah. Well, come get me. Oh, I got my spoon, you crunchy bitch. <laughs> Happy relationship every time with me and Skippy. Now I'm like some Amish farmer with an impatient wife. Is, is the butter ready, Jebediah? <laughs> Silence, woman! <laughs> so I can have... I asked this, the, the, that didn't last long. There was one jar of that before I threw it out the window. I said, all right, honey, what can I have? She goes, you can have raw almond butter. I go to the store, $17 for that much raw almond butter. As a younger man, I spent less money on cocaine. <laughs> I refused to buy it. I came home and she, she, she bought a machine now so we can make our own almond butter. So I read the instructions, I make my own almond butter, but I put bourbon in it. Oh, it's great, a sandwich and a half. I don't give a shit about anything anymore. 
She came in the kitchen the other day. She's like, how was lunch? It was great, baby. <laughs> and I didn't stir shit. <laughs> so I can have the almond butter. I can have brown rice, leafy green vegetables, a lot of kale, a lot of kale chips. Kale chips. Do you ever have kale chips? If you've never tried them, lick a shoe. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing. I tried to give them to my dog. My dog won't even eat it. She was like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> My wife has my dog on a raw diet. She wants everything natural. So my dog eats raw, organic bison. Because naturally, that's what a nine-pound Jack Russell would hunt in the wild. <laughs> uh, my dog would take down herds of buffalo if I let her out. This fierce predator I have. You slam the door, she gets scared and shits on the stairs. So the red meat was making her little body temperature too hot and she was itchy all the time. And we know the red meat was the cause because the dog's acupuncturist told us. <laughs> My wife has a holistic vet that comes to the house. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's no Groupon for that. <laughs> so she said we had to switch her diet from red meat, from the raw red meat to raw turkey. And the only turkey my dog will eat, we tried them all. The only one she's gonna eat is the Kosher Valley all white meat turkey. I had no idea my dog was Jewish. <laughs> and observant, who knew she was observant? I should have figured out that because she barks in Yiddish. She, feh, feh. <laughs> what is that, bison? Feh, too hot, can't eat it, feh. Get the ball. You threw it, you go get it, I should fetch. So we're all eating healthy now. Now I have, to, uh, I have to work on my attitude. Yeah, my wife wants me. She doesn't get it, my wife, because she's from Northern California. She grew up in the wine country, you know. Oh, look, grapes. <laughs> I grew up here in New York where kindness is greeted with suspicion. Yeah. Would you like some coffee? Why, what's in it? <laughs> you drink it first. We'll see what happens to you, Mr. Starbucks. No, 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 you started this shit, not me. Drink. Oh yeah, I'm suspicious, I'm cynical, I can't, I can't, I, I can't. My wife, she talks to people, my wife. Talks to people, no fear, no agenda, just greeting a fellow human being. It's beautiful, she's gonna get us killed. <laughs> We're in an elevator the other day, she's like, hi, how was your day? I'm like, uh, well, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Don't talk to these fucking people. <laughs> no, we're visiting. Don't tell them we're from out of town. Yes, I have, to, I have to put out pause. I tried to meditate. You ever do the meditation? Like early in the morning? Yes. Yeah, you do that? Yeah, I go back to sleep. How the fuck does it work? <laughs> oh, now, what am I, now I gotta wake up to go back to sleep? Thank you, Gandhi. Thank you very much. <laughs> What's your name, pal? Meditating dude. JJ. JJ. J -J. Is that your Sanskrit name? <laughs> JJ? Oh, Swami JJ. <laughs> Where are you from, JJ? From here? New York City? Yeah, okay. Look at, no, I'm from everywhere. <laughs> All is one in JJ's world. Does it work for you, the meditation, JJ? Does it, does it help you answer questions correctly? I think you haven't gotten there yet. What? <laughs> what? It, it found you, it found, it found you settled down? Yeah, it doesn't work for me. I, I like wild turkey. That's, that's <laughs> a little bit of bourbon. Oh, there's God. <laughs> and he looks like a bug. <laughs> Well, it's very nice to meet you, JJ. I'm glad you're here, and I am glad you're all here. You guys ready for a good show? We're gonna be right back. We got more for you. See you in a little bit. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Eddie Pence is taking the stage when we return. you've probably seen on the Late Late Show. Please help me welcome Eddie Pence. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? Awesome, awesome, good stuff. Settle down, settle down. 
I, uh, I recently had an epiphany. I found out what type of person I was. It took me a while, but I figured it out. I found out what type of person I was last week when I watched our dog dry hump our kid <laughs> for two minutes <laughs> before I got up off the couch to find a video camera. That's, that's who I am. That's me as a person. <laughs> Thank you. I, that deserves applause. I like being a dad, though. I like watching my kid grow up. I like watching him go through phases. He's going through a phase right now where he likes to tell me who and who does not have a penis <laughs> in public louder than me on this microphone. We were at Hooters recently. Um, kids eat free on Sundays. Hooters waitress walks by, loud as it can be, she doesn't have a penis. I'm like, I know, I know. Good call. Inside voice on the penis talk, okay? But good, you nailed it, good job. Two seconds later, do you have a penis? I know. Two for two, good job. But seriously, inside voice, penis talk. <laughs> mommy doesn't have a penis. I know. Mommy doesn't have a penis. I don't like mommy. Why don't you like mommy? Because she doesn't have a penis. Well, that's why I do like mommy, so... <laughs> Let's agree to disagree on mommy. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's, it's my favorite part of mommy. It's my favorite part of mommy. Besides her heart, besides her heart. I'm, I'm raising a kid in Los Angeles, which should be illegal. It should be illegal. Because there's some crazy people living in that city, man. There's some crazy, crazy people. There's a guy in my uh, neighborhood hung up a sign for a lost cat all over the place. And that doesn't even make you crazy, because one, cats, you don't even lose. They just leave. Like, you don't, you don't lose a cat. You lose a dog. You go up to someone's lost a dog, like, I'll give you $5,000, help me find my dog. Please help me find my dog. You go up to someone's lost a cat, they're like, yeah, he left. <laughs> he just looked at me and walked away. I don't know. He'll be back in a week with something dead. I'm not worried about it. It's not a big deal. But that's not what made the guy crazy. What made the guy crazy was on his lost cat sign, instead of a picture of a cat, it was just a drawing <laughs> of a cat. And not even like a police sketch artist rendering of a kitty cat. It was the basic representation of a kitty cat. Like a circle with triangle ears and whiskers. It's basically some crazy guy at home in a robe going, hey, if you see a cat, give me a call. Any cat will do, just need some cats. Making carpets, none of your business, but I'm making carpets. <laughs> Worst sign I ever saw for an animal in my neighborhood. Someone up beside said, found rabbit. <laughs> it's a phone number and everything. I just want to call and go, hey buddy, I think you just found a rabbit. <laughs> they live out there. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Who's walking around neighborhoods? Rabbit, you must belong to somebody. Let me take you home and fight. Why are you fighting it? Stop fighting it. <laughs> just trying to help you, rabbit. Idiot. <laughs> Dumbest sign I ever saw for a lost animal. Someone had a sign that said, lost bird if found, please go. <laughs> well, your bird flew away. It's, <laughs> why do you think of a sign that says lost helium balloon? It's, <laughs> it's fucking gone. I don't even know why you want bird. Why would you want your bird back anyway? Birds are horrible. But this is the most fun you have with a bird. This is it, okay, all right, there you go. Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay, let's put you back. All right, there we go. It's the worst six bucks I ever spent. That's if you get the thing out of the cage to begin with. Get out of the cage. Get out. Of the, get out. I want to play with you. Get out. The... <laughs> Carl. <laughs> Carl. <laughs> Lost bird and fowl. Please go. <laughs> Any animal you have to keep in a cage is not a pet. It's a detained animal. <laughs> if its first instinct is to flee, not a pet. If you'd rather be in the woods alone, away from you, not a pet. I know, because I had the worst pets ever, cage pets ever. I had hamsters growing up as a kid. That's the worst pet you can give a kid. You know why? Because they die every two years. That's how long they live. I had six hamsters as a kid. I buried six hamsters as a kid. You want to teach your kids about heartache and loss? Buy them hamsters. Life lessons early. I don't know why they call them hamsters. They just call them tiny tragedies. That's all they are. <laughs> They're just little tiny tragedies you bought your kid. I'm like, there you go, Billy. There's your tiny tragedy. Have fun with that. I'll buy you another one in 24 months. 
I'm not doing it to my kid. My kid's getting a pet that last. I mean, there you go, Billy. There's your sea turtle. Have fun with that. <laughs> Remember, your grandkids have to feed him. So, yeah, I know it doesn't have a penis. Just play with it. I like, being, I like being a parent, though, because it's cool, because I, I, I get to show my kids stuff that I liked as a kid. Like, I, I, just, I just got him to watch Star Wars. I, I love Star Wars as a kid. I love... I'm a big Star Wars fan. Big Star Wars fan. But the one thing that's always bothered me about Star Wars, uh, besides the last three movies, <laughs> were Jedis. Every Jedi was a badass. There was not, like, one slacker Jedi in the whole galaxy. There was not, like, one C-minus Jedi that kind of just... There was, like, one Spicoli Jedi that kind of cheated off the Asian Jedi to get through. There wasn't like one, which doesn't work for me because that entire galaxy had to be some Jedi go up to his master. Hey, master, how you turn your lightsaber? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was, that, was, that was almost worth my xiphoid process for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anatomy. My favorite character in uh, Star Wars was Han Solo. I loved Han Solo. Because he was such a dick. He's just such a dick. Like that one scene in Empire Strikes Back, when he's, uh, go to, he goes to rescue Luke Skywalker, Luke's stuck out in the snow, and he gets on his Tauntaun, and Deck Officer runs to him, Captain Solo, it's too cold out there, your Tauntaun will freeze before he reaches the first marker. And he just turns to him, just owning his dickness, just, well, I'll see you in hell. <laughs> Rides off on his Tauntaun. That's a good fucking Tauntaun impression, by the way. That's, that's a good Tauntaun impression. But the scene ends there, right? It ends there, you go watch him save Luke. That deck officer just got shit on. I wanna see what happens with him. I wanna see Captain Solo. It's too cold out there. Your time will freeze before he reaches the first marker. Well, I'll see you in hell. <laughs> what did you say to him? I told him it's too cold. His time will freeze before he reaches the first marker. And he said he'd see you in hell? Yeah. What a fucking dick. Just an asshole. Just, just trying to save his life. He's such a cocksucker. God. What's he been here, four months? He's a captain because he brought his own ship? I've been here five years, I'm still a deck officer. This is bullshit. Between you and me, I might go Empire. They got dental, they got health, they got rank and file. You don't just show up their own ship and you're a captain. Is that door shut? Is he gone? Fuck you! You guys made a lot of fun. Thank you very much. For more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Liz Mealy is taking the stage when we return. Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest is, lo is a lovely and talented lady. You've seen her on Comedy Central. It's Liz Mealy. <laughs> You're right, it's fine. I've, uh, I've lived in New York City now for 11 years and I don't have a gay best friend. That's weird, right? Like I went to art school, that's where they come from. And the problem is that I didn't have any gay friends, the problem is I had too many gay friends and I think as we all know, you can only have one because they're exhausting. So I was trying to narrow it down to the best gay guy. You know what I mean? Like the guy that would look into my eyes and know my shoe size, like they, <laughs> like they do in the movies. But nobody sits an adult New York City woman down and teaches you the truth about gay men, which is that they're just dudes. <laughs> Did you know that? They're just dudes like any other dude I've ever met. I'll give you an example. When I was like 19, 20 years old, I was at a party with my friend Ryan. I'm just getting shit-faced. Out of nowhere, Ryan grabs my boobs, starts shaking them, and laughing. I was like, what the fuck, dude? Don't touch me. And he's like, whoa, calm down. I'm gay. I was like, how's your gay make me not molested? Like, there's no rule, like, must have boner for me to feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Don't touch me. I've never had to tell a lesbian that. Because they were raised right. <laughs> I'm, uh, 
I'm trying to date. I, uh, I recently joined a free online dating website. I, uh, I joined OkCupid. I'm glad I joined OkCupid. I learned a lot about myself. Like, I learned that I'm a girl. <laughs> I've never felt like a girly person, but now I know that I am because the sole reason I didn't want to join that website is because I still wanted the story. I think every woman in here wants the story of how you met your boyfriend or how you met your husband, and you want it to be a good one. But I'm a comic. I want my story to be epic. <laughs> I want my story to be something like I was standing on the subway platform and I was texting, but I lost my balance and I dropped my phone in the tunnel. And then as a train was coming, this dude jumps in the tunnel, nearly gets hit by a train, jumps out, hands me my phone and his name and number are already in it. And his name would be Odyssey. I've been on exactly five OkCupid okay dates, so that means I've written five emails to my roommates titled, Please Seek Justice If Murdered. <laughs> For anybody that is trying to online date, I want to give you some hope. I did meet a dude online. Uh, it didn't work out, so it's a weird way to give hope. Uh, but you have to understand, there's still people that don't use their credit card on the internet. I fucked a dude from the internet. I'm like a success story and a survivor. <laughs> I want a t-shirt. I think he was my boyfriend. He always texted me back. If you want to know anything about the modern woman, if you text me back before my friends do, you are my boyfriend. That's how that shit works now. But it's because of him, I found the one benefit of online dating, which is he was the hottest man I have ever dated in the history of my life. So everybody I've ever dated was over here, and he was over here with like kittens and rainbows and other things I enjoy Instagramming. And it's strange, because I think most people know that when you meet somebody in person, you connect. And it's through that connection that you build an attraction. And it's through that method of dating that I have accidentally dated a lot of ugly men. <laughs> but you can't do that online. There's nothing to connect with. If you've never online dated, this is exactly what happens. You go through a really bad breakup, and you're single for like a year. And you get really sad, and your friends are like, oh my god, you're so sad. Maybe you should do that over there with the other sad people. <laughs> So you make new friends and they introduce you to online dating even though it's never worked out for them. So you go home, you make a profile, you cry and you judge the shit out of people. You do, it's really easy. You go, oh, those are your eyebrows? I'm not doing that. I take care of my face, maybe you should take care of yours. Oh, you mountain climb, that looks really fun. I'm not doing that. I don't have the energy or the time or the, m I'm not gonna fuck you and then mountain climb. That's a really long day. judging faces and hobbies and you're really just narrowing it down to what's most important which is do I want you to be inside me <laughs> you send all those dudes a message and you just hope that one comes back with a shitty childhood because <laughs> that's where personality comes from <laughs> that's why I've been so charming <laughs> I'll leave you with a story. I am, uh, I am the oldest, I'm the second oldest of five kids. I'm really close with all my siblings, but I'm especially close with my little brother, Sam. My little brother, Sam, is about 10 years younger than me. And the thing about Sam is he's only known me as a comedian. So I've kind of, it kind of has shaped my life being a comedian. I'm very honest. I've never told him a lie. I just kind of tell him as it is. And I always thought that was really cool about our relationship until pretty recently when I found out that we don't have boundaries and those are important. <laughs> This is how I found out. So uh, a couple months ago, my little sister and my little brother were living together at the time. And I walked in on one of the weirder conversations for an older sister to walk in on. I walked in on my little brother telling my little sister like those funny sexual position jokes. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? They always have a title, like the rusty trombone. It's always something fucked up. Like you come in her eye and it's called the pirate. <laughs> Shit like that. So this is the one I walked in on. It's a dude fucking a girl from the back, but that dude leaves. Another dude starts fucking her, but the first guy goes in front of a window, waves to her, and it's called the poltergeist. <laughs> and he's laughing, and he's laughing, and he's like, isn't that funny? You're a comedian, isn't that funny? That's so funny, isn't that funny? And I was like, no. field for 12 years. I've heard every fucked up thing you can do to a woman, and it's always something that ruins her hair, and I'm not okay with it anymore. I really care about my hair. 
So I decided as someone who essentially travels the world and does spoken word, that it's kind of my responsibility to spread feminist sexual positions. <laughs> free time, I came up with three. <laughs> Position number one is a dude going down on a woman. She squirts in his face. He learns to respect women. It's called the 19th Amendment. <laughs> All right, sa save your energy. I got two more. Position number two is a, dude, is a woman riding a dude. She gets him about 30% away from an orgasm, but she gets up and leaves. It's called the Equal Pay Act. <laughs> Position number three is my favorite. It's just a woman masturbating in a kitchen. A dude walks in sad. It's called Make Your Own Dinner. <laughs> I'm Liz Mealy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Kevin Iso is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest is from Houston. Please help me welcome Kevin Iso. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for uh, clapping. Um, uh, this is my favorite time of the year. Um, I'm glad that it's getting cold, because uh, cause I ain't really like the summer at all. Um, that, that's not, that's not the joke, but all right. Um, it's not that I didn't like the weather. The weather was fine, but in the summertime, it's just too many people wearing sandals, and, and everybody don't got the feet for sandals. You know what I mean? It's, it's way too many people with regular lives and homeless feet walking around. And, and uh... I ain't like it. I hate feet. For me, feet are like the first and last piece of bread. Like, <laughs> I know they're there for a reason, but I'm never gonna put them in my mouth, you dig? <laughs> um. <laughs> you ever see the toes where the second toe come out longer than the first one? It look like somebody trying to hand you a cigarette. It's like, yo, man. I don't even smoke Lucy's, man. Just... I know some people with such bad feet, I gotta like remember other reasons why I like them and shit. <laughs> man, if you didn't pay for Netflix, we wouldn't even be, we wouldn't even be cool. All right, I finished uh, school recently, college, and that was dope. Um, the only thing, nah. I... I'm much prouder than my parents were. Anyway, uh, I finished, and the only thing I didn't like about college was the commencement speech, because I went to a small school, and it was really whack. That's the last thing that you hear when you graduate. Like, my friend went to Harvard, and uh, Oprah went and spoke to them at the end that year. And Barack spoke to the kids at Oklahoma State, and, and we had a Rite Aid manager come talk to us. <laughs> And he still had his outfit on, like, yeah, I gotta get back to work after this, but, but we not hiring. I was like, why the, the fuck you show up? <laughs> Only thing I didn't like about college is uh, that, and, and, and then I thought it was weird, too, that, 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 that they let people graduate for, for just being good in sports. That's, that's strange to me. Cause they'll be like, yo, you don't even gotta go to class. You could dunk, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and I feel like that they should do that shit with stuff that you actually need, you know? I'd be like, Kevin, are you going to class? Like, class? <laughs> fuck out of here, I ain't going to class. <laughs> Have you tasted my omelets, dude? <laughs> Go 
going to class. <laughs> Y'all going to I used to get rejected a lot when I was in school by girls because I had a flip phone and they would assume I was broke and they were right, but I think. <laughs> I only like the way that society be looking down on people with flip phones. I do it sometimes too, man. Like I used to work in this bar and people would come in and be like, hey, y'all got an iPhone charger, which is normal. But one time this dude came in, he was like, yo, y'all got a Motorola Razor charger? <laughs> I was like, nah, man, we don't. We also don't have any Ashanti albums. It's... <laughs> 2014, dog. Liz was up here talking about a uh, 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 online date, and I don't, I don't do that. I think it's very disingenuous uh, and stupid. I had, I had a profile though, but. Uh, I wouldn't get any messages, so, so, so I created a, a girl's profile to see what my competition was saying, and I was just gonna copy and paste that and send it to other women. I got a lot of strange messages, a lot of strange stuff. Uh, I got a poem which I thought was very creative, but I don't think the dude wrote it. It's, uh, this is a poem anyway. He was like, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? <laughs> Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short to date. So long as men can breathe, their eyes can see. So long lives this, and this gives life to thee. For I hath not much, yet thou alone would make a man rich. And just in case thou were pondering, here's a picture of my dick. And <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of dick pics uh, as, a, as, a, as a girl. I got one that came in, the dude was like, oh my bad, I didn't mean to send you that dot dot dot, but what you think is... <laughs> Is my girth all right? I was like, it's cool, man. You know, it's... I didn't smile in any of my pictures. I used to hate my teeth. This, I used to hate it a lot. Uh, not innately, but it was just girls would make fun of me when I was in school. I remember one time this girl was like, okay, when are you gonna get braces? And that shit hurt, cause we wasn't even talking about appearances. We was at lunch talking about why chicken nugget day was so much better than pizza day. And she just dropped that question on me like my teeth were ruining her lunch. And I looked at my friends for help, like, yo, y'all gonna tell her to chill out? They was like, nah, that was a valid question, man. <laughs> your teeth ruining our lunch too, man. You gonna fix this shit. It's probably why I do stand-up now, because I'm like, I'm going to prove to that bitch I can make an America without straight teeth. But for some reason in this country, people have straight teeth even when they're not supposed to. You know? And the whole time I was watching Breaking Bad, I was like, damn, this dude Jesse been smoking meth for five seasons. <laughs> and his teeth look better than mine. This is not fair, man. It's I don't even want to really fix my teeth now that I'm older. Mainly because I learned how to balance girls' nipples in between my gap like a sour straw. So, you know, <laughs> straight teeth dudes can't do that shit, man. I used to like listen to a lot of rap music and shit to get over it. This is, that, was, that was my main, that was my main thing. I love rap. Some people would be like, man, rap music is dangerous. I don't really feel like that. You know, the, the most dangerous part about it is like if you listen to too much, you start to believe that you're somebody you're not. You know, me and my little brother listen to the same music, and we two different people. It's a song by Gucci Man that I like a lot, and, and, and then the song he goes, throw a grenade in the room, watch all your partners kaboom. And uh, I'm listening to it like, that's an onomatopoeia, this dude is a poetic genius. My, my little brother's listening to it like, yeah, what the fuck they be selling grenades at? Because I, I need to blow some people up. He really think he a gangster, which is like scary because I grew up with him. 
and I know him. Like I went home the other day, I was like, yo Kev, the only three things I care about is my gun, my dro, and my Instagram likes. But I'm like, dude, you still got Pokemon cards underneath your bed. What the fuck are you talking about? You can't be hard with a holographic Jigglypuff. You can, you can only be hard with an Onyx or a Geodude. It's facts. Hi, Mom. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Jason Anders is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, from HBO's Bad Boys of Comedy, he's from New York City, here's Jason Andors. <laughs> Yeah, I'm from New York. I grew up in New York City, a poor Jew. <laughs> Laugh it up, it's rare. It's like being a black guy with a small dick, but they're out there. Now, I'm not religious. People always ask me, how do you claim to be Jewish if you don't follow the religion? Easy, like religion's a small part of Judaism. Let's put it this way, I'm so Jewish, my parents sent my brother to private Catholic school because it was cheaper. <laughs> That's how Jewish we get down. Thank you. Now, I had a lot of horrible things happen to me growing up in New York City besides getting mugged every day. You guys ever use a payphone here before cell phones came out? Because you definitely wouldn't have if you heard this story first. I got shit on my ear. How disgusting is that? I was on the phone. I was like, yo, it smells like shit over here. I have no idea where it's coming from. It's such a clean neighborhood. Is it that homeless dude? No, he has new Timberlands on. I have no fucking idea. Where's all? Oh, come on. I'll call you back. I was so disgusted, I just froze. I became a mannequin on the corner with a doo-doo earring hanging from my ear. I just fell in a taxi. I was like, take me home. I don't remember where I live. I have shit on my ear. I can't think too clearly right now. Just look how I'm dressed and figure it the fuck out. I got home. I'm laying in the shower in fetal position, shivering like a little chihuahua, a little malnourished chihuahua, or like a healthy chihuahua. They all shiver, right? With hot water scorching my shit-covered ear. You ever try to clean shit out of your ear with all the crevices? You can't. I was hearing shit for weeks. I finally called my brother for some support. He's like, yo, that's so funny because my friend's friend is the one putting shit on the pay phones. Isn't that cool? No, that's disgusting. He's like, relax, bro, it was dog shit. Like that helps? Actually, it did. I was actually relieved because if it was human shit, I would have never gotten over that. I would have had to know whose shit was this before I can move on with my life. Is it that beautiful lady shit over there? Or is it a half-dead bleeding crackhead shit? Because if it's his shit, I'm gonna pull a Van Gogh right now and cut my ear the fuck off. I'm not walking around the rest of my life with a crackhead shit spirit hovering over my ear. Because I'm a germaphobe too. I'm such a germaphobe, I put toilet paper on the toilet seat. You ever do that? To take a standing piss. I don't play games. When I have sex, I use hand sanitizer as lubricant. I don't fuck around. I'm so paranoid about diseases, I don't even use condoms. I use a Mott's apple juice bottle. I don't want to catch shit. Sometimes I double bottle it. You can never be too safe. No, the truth is I wear condoms sometimes once in a while. You know what I mean? Condoms don't protect you from everything, right? A condom? It's like, it's like having like a $3 push button black umbrella in a hurricane. Something's getting wet and destroyed. You guys practice safe sex? One person, two people, okay. Remember that moment of silence. You won't hear it, but your family and friends will at your funeral. You practice safe sex? Yes. What about you? All right, so that's who I'm trying to fuck after the show. And because you're safe, we don't even need a condom because I trust you now. We've all done that, right? The verbal disease test. You're with someone you don't trust so much, you ask them questions to make you feel better about yourself. Am I the only one? Are you ever with someone you do trust because you know them through a friend's 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 friend friend? So you're like naked, so you just sneak it in once real quick? Just me? Nobody here has ever played a little AIDS dodgeball. You just sneak it in once, you're like, miss me AIDS, you slow as shit. Meanwhile, herpes is on your dick, like not me, I was on the track team. Just me, huh? I'm so paranoid about disease, I haven't even been having sex. I'm home, alone, me and my Johnson & Johnson's baby oil. A couple ladies got turned on when I threw a name brand at you. 
You're not gonna find a no-name brand baby oil in my medicine cabinet. I'm a player when it comes to jerking it. But I ran out of baby oil the other night. I wanted to do my thing to some Latina porn because I have a sick Latina fetish. I've seen every free Latina porn on the internet. There's not one free Latina porn I haven't seen. It's sad. So I have to do the next best thing. I'll watch Indian porn, turn the volume off and play Spanish music. That's how deep I get. That's how deep I get right there. So anyway, I get to the pharmacy. Now I know the girl behind the counter, so now I'm paranoid that she knows what I'm using the oil for. So I play it off, I'm on the phone with my girlfriend the whole time. I'm like, so what do you need again? Johnson and Johnson's what? <laughs> Baby oil? Never even heard of it. Excuse me, miss, do you have any, what's it called again? Johnson and Johnson's baby oil? Then my phone rang. I was like, oh, this is some bullshit. <laughs> now Sprint works, what a coincidence that it works now. I got so tired of worrying about diseases, I finally last year went out and found myself a wife. What? Okay. Don't clap, it was somebody else's wife. But I figured she had a husband, she's only sleeping with one guy, it's safer, right? Than being with a single girl sleeping around, you know what I mean? I dated a married woman for a year in Los Angeles. She cheated on me. How disrespectful is that? I trusted her. But not with her husband, with someone else. I was cool with her with her husband, right? I figured she, you know, was with him at first, I'm good with that. But a third guy, now I'm not worth 50% of a good lay? You know how hurt I was? I called him too, I was like, yo, your wife is cheating on us. And we need to talk to you disrespecting us, and this is fucked up. She was an amazing liar, too. I mean, women, you guys are the best liars. Congratulations. You, got, you are. You are. Because you guys are smarter than us. That's why I'm here to preach tonight and teach the fellas how to catch a woman lying to you. Sorry, ladies, I have to do it. Sorry. You ready for this, fellas? Listen carefully. Take this one home to the family and kids. If she tells you you have a big dick in a perfectly clear voice, while it's in her mouth. <laughs> you have a big dick, Jason Andrews. My lips touch eight times when I said it. How big can it possibly be? Paper thin big, perhaps? I don't know why women want a big one all the time. I watch porno, that big one goes halfway in. Mine goes all the way in. We hit stomachs, it feels good. It's romantic. Our pubic hairs connect and hug and read poetry to one another, it's beautiful. I had a big dick when I was a kid. <laughs> when I was 10, it was crazy. Stopped growing at 10 and it's still big now. That's how big it was at 10. I remember all the kids at sleepaway camp had a penis contest. I don't mean to brag, but I was the champion. <laughs> Probably because I was the only counselor who entered it, but whatever, you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do to win. I'm competitive. Now, I grew up in New York City my whole life. I've traveled the world doing comedy. New York's still my favorite city. It's the most open-minded city I've been to. Mixed couples can walk down the street holding hands. Gay people can hold hands. No one bothers them. I don't understand guys who hate gay people. That's a waste of energy. That's a waste of energy. I love gay men. Let me tell you why. 99.9% .9 of gay men are good looking and in shape. Keep fucking each other. Stay away from our women. Thank you. Right, it's always your ugly ass friend that hates them the most. Yo, I can't believe they're gay, that's nasty, yo. You better thank God they're gay. Because if they were straight, you would get no pussy, you ugly piece of shit. I went to the high school performing arts. I had a lot of gay friends. I had one gay friend, I always walked around with his head to the front. Uh -oh. <laughs> He was always focused. There's so many gay people in New York and everyone's gonna be gay, watch. Every comedian will be gay, making fun of straight people will be the opposite show. Right, just coming on stage, just what's up Gotham? I wanna thank everybody here for coming. That's coming with a U, spell it bitches. Uh, counter clock. Now take the L out of clock and what do you have? Bitches, okay. <laughs> Don't you hate straight men? Nasty. <laughs> How you like women? I think straight people are born, they're not born that way. They're born like due to a dysfunctional family. Straight guy, I don't get it. How you like vaginas? That's nasty. 
It's so confusing. How you tell the difference in the pee hole and the clit? <laughs> Seriously, how do you guys tell the difference? Can somebody help me out with that? <laughs> All right, back to the character. <laughs> I hate straight men, right? They always be into sports, right? They always be like, Yankees, Yankees, Yankees. Why don't you just yank these, bitch? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Fuck, I've been doing this character so long, I can't even get out of the characters. <laughs> anyway, guys, I gotta get out of here. You guys have been beautiful. Thanks for supporting. Keep supporting the show. Jason Andrews, have a great night. Please. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Thank you guys so much. Let's bring everybody up you saw. Come on up. Eddie Pence, Lisa Mille, Kevin Iso, and Jason Andors. I'm Adam Ferrara. We'll be here next week. You come back and see us. Go on, get out.